it was uh, a terrible sight to see. He was all full of the white powder. 147 is his firehouse, which is what he loved. That's where his heart always was. Inside his helmet, he kept pictures of us. This was actually the last picture I took with my dad. This picture, snapped by an unknown photographer, went viral in both the U.S. and international media. A copy of the photograph is stored at the National September 11th Memorial and Museum. This is our father here kneeling down. Um, you know, he was working down at the pile for months. After the 9-11 terrorist attacks, Eliotto worked for extended periods of time at Ground Zero, looking for the remains of the dead, breathing in toxic substances that took a toll on his health. And my husband had glass and uh, pieces of black smoke and uh, things in his, ch in his lungs. And little by little, he was t taken from us. Doctors said he had 10 years at most. He lived for 18. He was a fighter, but 9-11 never left him. 9-11 became him. Uh, he would do it all over again. Eliotto's three daughters have a hard time remembering that dreadful day. Amanda was 10, Ashley was 6, and Alyssa was only 4. Angela Eliotto picked up the two older girls from school earlier than usual that day, but they didn't go home. They went to the neighbor's place. A lot of their neighbors also had family members who were firefighters. All the moms were crying and watching it on TV. So once I started seeing the TV and the, the fire department, I had a feeling, you know, daddy was there. On the morning of 9-11, Thomas Eliotto was heading home after a night shift. After he learned the first plane hit the tower, he turned around and went straight to what had been the World Trade Center. He almost died under the North Tower that was collapsing to the ground. It took him a few hours to free himself from the rubble. And then he just lost track of time. It was a blur, a desperate attempt to find survivors amid the wreckage, the debris, the giant metal beams. He thought he was dead. Um, he, he, I remember him telling me that he had no feeling. He thought something was biting him. I can't just explain it. He was bleeding inside his boots. In 2006, due to health issues, Eliotto had to leave his job. His only outlet now was his family. We lived a little bit different than other children around us. They didn't really understand, you know, our dad came home. That was like, they, your dad came home, that was it. But our dad didn't really come home as who he was. He was a completely different person after that. Ashley and Amanda became teachers, like their mother. Eliotto tried to convince Alyssa, the youngest of the three, to do the same. But she chose a career in the police force, and that made him extremely proud. Right before her graduation from the academy, Alyssa and some of her friends went to the National September 11th Memorial and Museum, a tradition New York policemen observe. I sent him a helmet. He said, it's, very, it's sad. I said, very. He said, look for Mike Esposito, which was his best friend that he lost that day. He had sent me a picture, that exact picture. Um, said, I've been trying to find that. He said, can we spend some time together tonight? I said, yes. And that was December 17th, 2019 at 2 p.m. And what? that was the last time I spoke to him because later that night, he lost his battle. Everything in the house still reminds Angela and the girls about Eliodo. I can still like smell the smoke. It makes me feel like my dad's here. It's the second 9-11 anniversary in the house that Eliodo is not present at. A metal cross he found at Ground Zero, awards, his helmets. Eliodo's daughters cherish everything that reminds them of their father. Alyssa's graduation picture has his face photoshopped on it. He died six days before the event, but in the picture, they are together. You can even hear his voice, a little recorder hidden in stuffed toys that still says the words his family heard so many times. For Nina Vishnova in New York, NRI's VUA News.